technologies and bring them to the world of sports. I give you the Bridgestone Performance Balls and puck. Some of the world's great athletes will be helping us test these new products, which have the potential to revolutionize sports as we know it. Mr. Vitale, you must have a question. <laughs> At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. This is Erica. She lives in California, loves cooking and horseback riding. Erica has tried dating sites, and they gave her plenty of options, but few real connections. That's why she switched to eHarmony. Only eHarmony helps you to find exactly what and who you're looking for, then introduces you to those who best complement you, which is why eHarmony first dates have a better chance of becoming something more than on any other site. Where it goes from there, well, that's up to you. Review your matches free on eHarmony.com today. So everything is free until February 4th? Everything. What about this? Free. These? Free. Hey guys, what about these? Free. free. There's never been a better time to shop Rena Center because everything is free until February 4th. Welcome to Longhorn Steakhouse. Choose from five great steaks, each $11.99. Like our new bacon wrapped sirloin, topped with onions and bourbon glaze. Or try our garlic herb crusted sirloin. Five great steaks, each $11.99. Only at Longhorn Steakhouse. Tom Flores. Hoping that uh, he can kind of an, encourage some more magic out of Bo Levi Mitchell here as the American team gets a shot in the final six minutes of play to drive down the field. Bo Levi Mitchell from Eastern Washington. Walter Payton Award winner this year. Oh, and there he throws a ball behind on the slant. Thomas from Hampton. That was a great curl, flat, slant break on the slant, excuse me, by Alex Hoffman Ellis, who already has an interception from Washington State. And that's one of the things that he does a good job of. He reads the eyes of the quarterback and has pretty good, I would have to say, transition ability sometimes, even though there's some stiffness there. I like the way he reads the eyes of the quarterback. It's going to be interesting what Mike Leach does with that Washington State program. It's kind of like the perfect Ooh. fit for him, away from everything. You know, before you know it, I bet they are a player in the Pac-12. Well, the foundation was late. Paul Wolf did a good job in rebuilding that. Now, as the receiver goes down, pass incomplete to John McKnight. And Minnesota was out there running, but he fell near midfield. And you talk about Leach. You can't forget that at UCLA, I had a chance last night. I ran into Jim Moore. Jim Moore and, and, and what energy he has. So the Pac-12, well, things are looking up. And this guy that King once upon a time knew. What's his name? Rich, Rich? Rich? Yeah, yeah. Something yeah. Like that. He's, he's in the conference too now. They're going to turn Pac-12 into one of those shootout offensive yeah, kind of yeah. conferences. Somebody's got to play some defense. I, I would suspect that would be UCLA with Jim Moore. <laughs> And Bo Levi Mitchell now needs to convert a third. And that ball, well, there was, uh, I guess this is what bowl games are about. As you can <laughs> see, that's, that says it all right there. That, that sequence of plays just didn't go very well for Mitchell and the American team. Yeah, we wanted to talk about the great comeback he had in the yeah. national championship games and, and maybe get a little bit of that, but the miscommunication between Mitchell and, and the guy we talked about yeah, all day, Jerry exactly. Green, you just you pointed can, to him, Ted. You can see it there. Green ran a streak up the sideline, and Mitchell wasn't expecting it. Like doing a big scene like you screwed up. We talk about it when we come over here, okay? That's all I'm talking about. What happened? What's the signal? And you know what? That's, that, that, that's, that's a great, a, example a great coaching point. Yes. One thing that young quarterbacks want to do, they want to show everybody that it wasn't my fault when it's not about that. Come to the sideline, look at the pictures. We'll find out what really happened. Isn't that perfect? I mean, that's the whole point of this week, the NFL PA. So this is about teaching you how to be a pro. There's a big lesson right there. You lost a little bit of your cool now. You you get you got to regroup yourself and have some composure because you haven't been the same as you've been all week. Okay. Slow your brain down. Slow it down. But the only thing I was trying to make to you, you know, you guys are buddies, and you don't want to make your brother there. I mean, I think. See, I just don't think that's what you want to do. Yes, sir. You know, you come over here on the side, you square it away, you take. I think maybe I'm not I'm not mistaken. That might be Ted Tolder. Uh, as the offensive uh, coordinator, what, a, what an offensive coordinator he's been over the years, trying to kind of get those guys back under control. One of the things you heard him say there, pick it up, you have a thing you're not the same as you've been all week. Number 66. And, and that's what Sean Five was yards. talking about, First trying down. to go outside of your character 
particularly late in the game when there's a play that needs to be made. Both players right there having to get calmed down a bit by a coordinator who's done a lot of that over the years. Uh, Ted Toner's not only his college pedigree at USC, but a lot of time in the pros, and most recently with the Oakland Raiders, where he and Tom Flores would have connected. One thing you said earlier, Ted, that I couldn't agree with more than couldn't couldn't agree with any more is the quality of some of those former Oakland Raider coaches. I saw Rod Martin's name yes. on that list. Yes. <laughs> I mean, who can forget the Super Bowl back? Was it Super Bowl 14 or 15? Yeah, in 1983, right? Well, he had. To, I think that was against Philadelphia when he had the three interceptions. I, I, I just, it's incredible to have somebody like that. I'd be going crazy right now if I had him coaching me. Yeah. That's kind of how I felt when I saw Robert Griffith, Griffith's name on there. Two-time, three-time Pro Bowler with the Minnesota Vikings. Very good safety. G.J. Kenny trying to get the Nationals one more trip down the fielder, keep the ball, but now they'll face a third down. Don't forget that after football here from Los Angeles, we have the premiere of NBC Sports Network Fight Night from the Asylum in Philadelphia. Main bout heavyweight Philadelphia natives Bryant Jennings and Maurice Bayard. That's coming up next. NBC Sports Network Fight Night. Yeah, one thing, you saw that last play that was, uh, I believe, John Sabetta Mosey out of uh, Stanford. The big, tall corner going against Nelson Rosario, a guy we spent some time with yesterday, fellas. Yeah. Sean, what, what, a guy has a great week, and then he comes out, and you, you, you played an all-star game, and he doesn't do it on game day. What does that tell you? Well, I think guys have to learn. As you become a National Football League player, practice is about intensity. Practice is having the right intensity, practicing at the right tempo. Game day is about execution. It's about being able to come out and execute, run the right, at the, run the route at the right depth, understand your sight adjust based upon what the defense is doing from a blitz standpoint. And a lot of times these wide receivers, they get so keyed up on game day that they forget some of the intricate details that it takes to be successful. But Zach Mash is continuing to mash the opponents getting those hands up. I mean, how many times has he done that today? Twice, Ted? Yeah, that's, I, I, that's I like his second, energy. Yeah. I thought he was very heavy-handed. I talked to Philip Daniels, their defensive line coach. The first thing that stood out, he was wearing number nine in practice, very heavy-handed. This guy has really had a good week, and, and he's finishing it off today, what you're talking about, Sean. I, I would really uh, dislike. I didn't like guys that did that. You know, so defensive lineman Ted would bat a ball down when I was playing quarterback. And I tried and get in his head. And I say, guys that bat balls down can't rush the pass. And I say, they don't pay guys for bat downs at these times. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Isaiah Ooh. Thomas. Is, <laughs> I want to get back to that if we can. Isaiah Thomas on the return. <laughs> Zach Mash would like to get back to that. All right, let's take a look at Corey's now top five linebackers. I think this is, this is a list that we'll all get excited about, starting off with Melvin Ingram. Played defensive end, defensive tackle. He even lined up at linebacker on some third downs. Great field speed. Courtney Upshaw, he's a natural outside linebacker. He's already done it. We already mentioned Keekley, the great instincts. Andre Branch, can he bend well enough? Tackle's okay in space. And Zach Brown, got to wrap up better. Unbelievable speed, 60-meter champion. Wow, you got a linebacker doing that in the ACC. You keep your eye on him at the combine. He might do something special. I'm a big Zach Brown fan. I think he's one of those guys that's explosive in space. A game changer can make plays for you. The top two guys on that list, Melvin Ingram and Courtland Upshaw, to me are a little limited because I think they have to be in a 3-4 defensive scheme. So if that's not what you run on defense, that might not be your flavor of the month. But all exceptional guys. And, you know, a guy like Courtney Upshaw from Alabama, I wish he would show a little more ability in space where you could project him in a 4-3 defense at the outside linebacker spot. But on the line of scrimmage, he's very tough. He's aggressive. You know he's well coached because Saban does a great job. But I, to me, it, it, it brings him down just a little bit because I think he only fits the 3-4. Well, no, I, I disagree with you a little bit there. I understand what you're saying. But you have to remember when you have a 4-3 under team, 
4-3 under teams, they bring the Sam linebacker on the line yeah, of scrimmage to jam time, yeah. those tight. Exactly. Yeah. You know about that. Right. You had to read those coverages all the time. So I think he can do that. I think that occasionally on third down, this is a guy that can put his hand in the ground. What's the pass? I, 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 I kind of felt like Hightower did a little bit better, though, sometimes yeah. on third downs than even he did. But the limitations there, there are some. So you're right. This is not a true linebacker, per se. He's more of a we're, we're projecting him to what he kind of played in school, a stand-up position. And you mentioned Dante Hightower. Very interesting what the evaluation process holds for him. You remember with Londo McClain, first-round pick of the Oakland Raiders. Dante Hightower was a higher-rated prospect before the knee injury. So it'll be interesting as he gets close to the draft. He's able to ascend those draft boards of a specific team. And what a this, hit. This is a terrific hold up. <laughs> this is Nick Stevens throwing in Andrew Skirba from Penn State has battled a lot of back injuries through his career. Touches the <laughs> ball for the first time and he hangs on. And this lets you know that this isn't just like some Pro Bowl type atmosphere we have here. These guys are playing. Both sides want to win. Both teams have guys that want to make big impressions. A, a lot of target to hit at nearly six foot seven, but he held on. Ooh, and there's one that isn't held. A three step slant and Tune, who really kind of made his name at Oregon as a possession guy, did not hang on there. Peyton Thompson has been active. You saw him make that big hit on the punt team a minute ago. He's been in the slot. Ray Crockett talked about him, number 25 from San Jose State. I really enjoy watching him on field film. The only question I had about him was his long speed. Today, he's played a little bit faster than maybe even I would have expected in this game. And as you develop relationships with your wide receivers, you have fun in those moments. You know, a guy drops a ball like that, Ted, he comes back to the huddle, don't worry about it. I already filed a police report. And the first time you say it, he gives you that look for the felony assault because the ball just beat you up. Ah, oh, man, that'll be a grounding. And that'll be intentional grounding, so the sack will stand. <laughs> I've been and waiting it's Delano, jo Delano Johnson of Bowie State. Now, this is an interesting story. In his career, 10 Number 29 was kicks. not in the area. Intentional grounding by the offense here. number two. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Loss of down, third down. You see it, you see him right here celebrating a little bit. Watch him right here. They did play defensive end. Those long arms, six foot five, 270 pounds, wraps up. He actually played a linebacker position in school. They tried to put his hand in the ground, the HBCU ball, with limited success. He's getting better, though. And on special teams today, he has two tackles. Now he's getting it done at end. He's already played linebacker today from an exchange position. Delano Johnson is helping himself today. And he's an interesting guy. You know, another guy who kind of made that transition. They weren't sure what he was going to be last year in the draft. Justin Houston from Georgia. Another guy played some linebacker. Didn't know if he projected as a end in a 4-3. So they're going to get St I believe Stevens went over the line of scrimmage here. Beyond the line of yeah. scrimmage when he threw the pass. Illegal forward pass number two. Five yards. Loss of down. Brings up fourth down. So frustrating. Nick Stevens trying to make plays. The grounding call on the previous play and there he just went past the line of scrimmage as he throws this ball. And I think both of those ends are doing a good job of collapsing the pocket. You see uh, Canty over there from Morehouse, uh, Jarvis Canty trying to hang on, and he already has a couple of holding penalties earlier. So the big thing you got to look at here late is whether or not these ends will be the difference makers to prevent this team from going in for, it looks like maybe the game winning score. And I was going to well, say, I wasn't sure if he was across the line of scrimmage. It looks like they've adjusted that call. Well, they did. They readjusted. Okay. They did. They're going to count that as a completed pass here. And uh, Dick Vermeil successfully a, argued, <laughs> uh, unsuccessfully yeah, exactly. argued. So it's fourth down here, and uh, the Americans need fourth down. They need seven. Cox is the running back. Stevens pressure bounces away, can't get away, and eventually. That pressure from the national front gets him, and that's your man, Corey, Tracy Robertson from Baylor. And I think that's the thing we talked about. I mean, if you look at the replay right there, and he's going against Mr. Bell from Furman. I think his name is Ryan Bell, and he's really a, had a pretty good week in terms of talking to the coaches, but uses the quick arm over, gets over the top, and gets skinny, and that's the big reason why he was Baylor's best pass rusher this past season. Well, there is uh, our... AstroTurf, NFLPA, Collegiate Bowl MVP, G.J. Kinney. And remember the terrific running touchdown that he scored 
in the first half. A very, very impressive game for GJ. I thought he made some great throws. A couple back shoulder throws that you know, show how advanced he is in the passing game and understanding where to put the football on those vertical routes and you know then the elusiveness you know he's forced to get outside of the pocket I mean the second move here is pretty good he makes the linebacker miss but watch the move he puts on the safety I mean that's pretty good right there <laughs> yeah that was an awesome move and I think the thing about him you see the energy right there whenever you make a move like that the rest of the game becoming becomes easier because now you've done something where your teammates are bringing your energy level up to the point where they're saying you're our leader the rest of the, the, of the today. And, and he's done a great job. And so this should be the final snap of the AstroTurf and LPA Collegiate Bowl. Became a, a, an entertaining game. The Americans had a couple of shots. They really had two possessions here at the, in the final six minutes, a chance at least. And, you know, we got to go back to that defensive line. Let's give them credit. They came through. I think I said Bell earlier. I don't want to disrespect Ryan Lee from, from Furman. He was beaten by Tracy Robertson, and that really kind of iced it. They well, came in, and, and it was think, over with after think that. Think back, Gerald Gooden of Purdue put on such mm -hmm. a fierce rush, caused a holding penalty that negated what would have been a go-ahead touchdown pass. Yeah, and I think when you start looking at some of the different players who stood out today, I think as the game went on, it was the lineman that stood out on both teams. Now, I know this was in the first half where Kenny made his, uh, a, a big impact, but I felt like late in the game with Delano Johnson and, and even Justin Edison was another player who I felt like made some plays. Justin Edison on defense, he impressed me today. Uh, you talked about Gooden. The, the national defensive line stepped up, and you got to give that defense some credit too, even though Kenny was the MVP. All right, you saw the coaches who they played against each other in college a few years back. Uh, the players exchanging well wishes, and we've got the MVP of the game. G.J. Kinney is with Anthony. The MVP of the first ever AstroTurf NFLPA Collegiate Bowl. G.J., what was important to you coming into this week? There were some elements about your game that you wanted to prove to scouts. What were they? You know, just just that I could come out here and compete against the best of the best, uh, and that's what I did. We had a great coaching staff, uh, you know, a great bunch of guys uh, on the offense and defense, and we were able to come over here and get a big win. You know, it, it, people say, oh, it doesn't matter, it's an all-star game, but it's a pride thing, and uh, for us to be able to win like that was, you know, uh, very special. One of the things people don't realize about this process, there's a lot of fun that goes with it, but your dream lies ahead of you now, wanting to be an NFL quarterback. How much of a week like this is business? How much of it is able to have fun? Uh, you know, I think it's a balance, but, uh, you know, going into it is definitely a business trip. Uh, but you want to have fun at the same time. We were able to win, so that's the fun part. In your game, we, we know the 30 touchdown passes you had at Tulsa at one point, but your legs were showcased a bit today. Is that part of your game that maybe people don't know? Uh, yes, sir. I think so. You know, I was able to run a little bit in college, and uh, I was able to scramble around and extend the play and, uh, you know, just make plays for offense. It doesn't really matter, you know, who scores as long as we score. We've gotten to see your story, GJ. Congratulations on an excellent performance Thank today. Thank you very much. Ted? Young man whose father was a football coach and was shot by a parent, an upset parent, when G.G. J.G. was in high school. Can you imagine how mentally tough he is having pulled through all of that? Well, he definitely represented his family very well. Today, I thought his performance was outstanding, very deserving of the MVP award for the AstroTurf NFL PA Collegiate Bowl. Having said that, I do think that John Tate Green, the cornerback from New Mexico State, a guy that Corey was high on, I thought played a really good football game. Corey? Yeah, I think the big thing when you look at the, the overall performance is we talked about Bo Levi Mitchell all day. Uh, you, you just mentioned Green. Uh, again, I'm going to go back and give Philip Thomas some credit from Syracuse. I thought he was somebody that, that flashed. I got to mention Delano Johnson because of the special teams effort. And then somebody else who I felt like kind of went under the radar for much of the game and ended up having a pretty good game was also somebody in that back end when you start talking about all right, well, those young men have got three months ahead, further work in their evaluation as they pursue their dream of playing professional football. Well, coming up next, the premiere of NBC Sports Network Fight Night from Philadelphia. Thanks for joining us for this first ever AstroTurf NFLPA Collegiate Bowl. For Sean King, Corey Chavis, and Anthony Heron, our entire NBC Sports Network crew, I'm Ted Robinson saying goodnight from Carson, California.
gonna love this place. For $20, you can each choose an entree and share an appetizer. <laughs> we love it. It's Golden Corral's ultimate two for 20 dinner buffet. It's unlimited and endlessly delicious. Monday through Thursday, only at Golden Corral. Sam Adams, at the peak of its freshness, there's nothing better. Our mission is to make sure when you crack open that bottle of Sam Adams, you're getting the freshest beer you could possibly get. If it's not fresh, we buy it back. We spent so much time selecting the ingredients and using traditional brew processes. We want to make sure everybody gets a fresh Sam. When you're on this team, you learn to never give up. Even if you're down, third string quarterback, clock ticking, hostile environment, exhausted, you can never lose hope. There are over 13 million people in the Horn of Africa affected by famine, war, and drought that are counting on us for help.